All right, so at this point, you should hopefully know how to understand just rotating basic objects in perspective, your cube, your square, your circle. And also you should understand a little bit about perspective. How do these things go backwards in space? And you can even imagine uh, an XYZ axis like this in Cartesian coordinates. And just how do these ellipses connect? Uh, can you draw a basic sphere? And if you can understand these uh, guidelines, you can think of them as eye lines, ear lines, and center lines. Now from there, uh, you can follow some of the guides that Andrew Loomis recommends. And different guides exist out there. There's all sorts of different theorems for how to break the head up. But a good start point is take a sphere and divide it in half. And that's your eye line. And then if you divide that in five units across, that's your eye's distance. So the head is five eyes across, and your nose is about one eye in between that. You can also notice that your ear and your nose are generally on the same axis. So if you pull your eye socket across, your ear, or if you pull your nose across, it's going to line up with your ear. Uh, now, what's great about this is if you understand it from this flat point of view, you can start rotating this basic sphere in perspective, and you have your meridians follow that, your eye line, your ear line, and your center line. So you'll note that your ear line, your ear starts at kind of the halfway point there and follows along. And if you are drawing this and thinking about geometry, you can make sure that your head is rotating in space. So there I drew a quick facing down face, and here I'm going to draw one that's facing upward. You'll notice that I start off with geometry, and we can see that this eye line has to loop around, so my ear is going to be far below my eyes, but my ear also is still going to be in line with my nose. And then when I bring that circle down a little bit for a chin, and give this guy a bloody nose, I can place all these objects. I'm also using the center line to figure out if it's to the left or right. Loomis outlines a couple of different guides for your starting stuff. Uh, another good guide is that your mouth is going to be just slightly above the halfway point between your nose and your chin when you're at rest. So if you mark the little bottom of your nose and the bottom of your chin, uh, find the halfway point and put your lip line a little bit above that. And I really like drawing Professor X to study this stuff because Professor X is uh, kind of young but kind of old and he's also bald so he's really good for fixing mistakes. Now if you draw this from the side view, uh, you can see other benefits. So you can see how I'm able to place my nose really, really fast compared to my ear. Uh, because my ear starts at, again, that, uh, that ear line right down the center. And your chin actually is going to follow that. So you can pull that down. Women have slightly different proportions uh, and slightly softer features. And it's just something that you have to practice all the time. But you can start with some of the same guides. And when in doubt, if you just need a little practice, you can sort of map these out and start that way. And it's going to make your drawing go a lot further. So how do you wrap this in space? Well, you can start with a sphere, as per usual. I can start with a center line and an eye line. And that tells me that this person's looking up a little bit. And uh, how far do I put the eye to the left or right of that center line? Uh, center lines are also something that's really fun to just constantly contour because it tells you a lot about a form. You can contour all over the place. What about a lady looking down? Well, we can tell by this geometry that her ear is going to be a lot higher up than her nose this time. But they're in proportion to each other. Here's a quick study of this one next to her. And the, the stage after that is, how do you put form onto this? Well, if this is understood as a basic shape, it should be quite easy to pick a shadow side of a square or the shadow side of a circle. You throw a terminator on there, and you shade below the terminator. Uh, now, the problem with these formulas is uh, they are actually a little bit removed from life. They're really useful to know as shorthand, and you don't always have a model handy. But it's also important to look at real life. So I got this photo of a jazz musician uh, off of Wikimedia. And you can see that he's got a lot of character in his face. He's got 
age wrinkles that Andrew Loomis is not talking about. And uh, it's a very different drawing experience. So you have to also understand basic measurements. But if you have this baseline theory, you can start going off of that. So this guy, for instance, uh, he's smiling. That immediately throws off uh, where you put your lip line, right? Because his lips are open. Uh, and the study of life is something that you should always go back to for this stuff. You can also notice that uh, he's got, uh, I don't know, he's a fun face. So what about this photo of me? Well, first off, you can see, based on some quick geometry, that I'm turning my head slightly downward. And that's going to change how I mark out my geometry. This is a trace over. But consider that rotation. And how does everything move in tandem with that in 3D space? What about this front view? Well, this front view is interesting because we're going to start noticing a couple of problems that arise due to perspective. This is about middle distance from the camera. And you can see there's about five eyes distance across. And my lip line is a little bit above the halfway point, And you can find my head in three quarters. But when I move farther back, uh, I'm going to have less perspective distortion. So, you know, given a cube that's really, really close to you, like this one, versus one that's really, really far away, the far away one is going to get uh, smashed further and further into perspective. So what about this close-up view? You can see that because my nose is a lot closer to the camera, it's going to distort in perspective. Uh, there's... Uh, a couple other things that change. So my eye distance is going to be wrapped around further to the back here. Uh, and that also changes how you do something like the five eyes theorem. What if my head is rotating? Again, study of life is really what you want to go back to. But it's a great place that you can understand these formulas. So look at how my ears wrap around. If you put a big rubber band around my head, my ears and my nose are going to be sort of in tandem, but as I rotate my head up and down, that changes how you place that geometry. What if I'm looking down? In no way are my ears and my nose in line based on those frontward views, but if I'm thinking about geometry, it's really useful to know those shorthand ideas. Also, my perspective is getting changed. My forehead is way close, and my chin is far away. And that's one of those things that you can exaggerate to make a more appealing drawing. So this is a quick exercise I want to finish off with. And I highly recommend you do this, especially if you ever have artist's block. Just start with a couple of basic spheres and just turn them into the basic level of geometry, right? What do we need? We need a center line going around the center. We need an eye line going across. And from the side, we need an ear line, just like my headphones, that represents this. And if you have these three axes, you can represent anything turning in space. Now, once you have that, you can start filling it in. And this is always really great practice. Uh, eventually, you start dealing with other aspects of geometry. For instance, your nose is going to be placed on that using geometry, but then it extrudes upward. Your eye sockets are going to go inward. How does this connect to your neck? But using all these basic ideas, I'm starting off with a really basic, front-facing, easy formula head, right? But what about this one turning backwards in space? How do I change that? I'm going to give this person sort of short bangs. I'm trying not to just draw Professor X over and over. And this is really just something that's an exercise in creativity. The other thing that we're going to start looking at more and more is how to draw skulls. And how can you exaggerate this? Uh, one of my favorite artists is Jack Davis, who was a Mad Magazine cartoonist. And he was a master of geometry. But he used it to make really, really well put together faces that were just hilarious to look at. I'm going to turn this guy, give him a funny mustache. And in the world of cartooning, you start seeing how you can really squash and stretch these proportions. So I put this guy's lip line way, way down. And how does that change the emotion that's attached to this guy? He suddenly feels very old. Uh, he feels also kind of highbrow, as if that's coming because he's snootily got his nose up there. But if you understand geometry, you can also start, just like putting shading onto a basic cube, you can mark out 
the Terminators. You can put your core shadow on one side of it. You can have cast shadows come off of that. Uh, another great example of character is doing sort of troll noses. So you put your nose way up here. And this is the opposite of having your nose sort of in line with your ear. And it changes uh, the effect of it. If you can map out this geometry, it's really useful for making abstractions from real life. So how can you make sort of alien geometry? How can I put in an ear and horns and stuff? Well, as long as I can understand how this is wrapping in space, I can use bilateral symmetry and say that this horn has to exist on the other side of it as well. Or about what about something completely alien? Like maybe something that has uh, you know, big eyes on the side and you know, how do you just get an interesting design from nothing is uh, a really complex problem, but starting from geometry is always a great idea. You can see I'm trying to emphasize that center line, and that center line doesn't just represent the basic shape, although it has to represent that first, but eventually I can have it go around his lips. All right, go study Andrew Loomis.